Hello and welcome to the screen to screen selling experience presented by Dutta Beat Tray. Do you feel left behind because you aren't able to keep up with the latest technology trends? Are you tired of making mistakes with technology that cost you a fortune? Or do you feel stuck because you don't know how to set yourself apart from the competition? Organizations bring in the Gadevi to trade when they want to dramatically improve their sales, productivity and the customer experience with the latest technology. Dags us more than speak about the trends. A set the trend with this creative approach or using technology in a way that is unique to you, your message, and your brand. Dax clients recently shared these success stories. I cannot thank you enough for all your help with Zoom meetings and webinars these past few weeks. That was so amazing. You did a fantastic job and should be proud of what you offered. Not only does he identify and understand emerging trends before others do, he helps you figure out how to capitalize on them in a way that's unique to you and your goals. Doug's presentations are engaging, provide actionable takeaways, and always fun. Make sure to introduce yourself in the participant chat, ask clarifying questions, and share what you like so you can get the most value from the program. Are you ready to bookmark favorite links, add them to your to-do list, and take massive action? Make sure to keep your cell phone muted when you are into speaking, turn off all notifications, and close down any other programs you don't need for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned. We will begin the program momentarily. The information delivered through this medium is owned by Doug David Tree International Inc. and not to be redistributed without written explicit permission. All rights reserved. Yeah, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Living in a Voice First World. Um, my name is Doug DeVitri. I'm your speaker today. We're going to share with you all these new ideas and concepts and tools that you can apply, especially if you're focusing on the real estate industry, right? And many of these ideas are either free, they're either low cost, or um, actionable in a way to not just like here it is, but you can put the right team together in order to be able to, to make some of these possible. So really like when you kind of start off um, with something like this, you know, you really want to talk about some mistakes that can be made, right? Uh, you, whether it's a mistake that's made in development, whether it's a mistake that's made in design or just the overall business case, right? And I just got to tell you this, uh, I got started with voice apps back in 2017. Uh, it was when my son, who was two at the time, and I'm obsessed with his baby brain development. And I would say, you know, Alexa, uh, play play a song, or I'd say, Alexa, what is a snake, or what is a mongoose? And now, and then it would give me the Wikipedia definition, right? And then with the devices with the screen, it would then show what it is. It's like, okay, this is cool. How do I make this specific to real estate? And so. <clears throat> Um, I, I, you know, I took one of the courses from a cloud guru, which was awesome. Helped get me started. So I was thinking, okay, if the biggest impact I could make is creating the realtor party Alexa skill. Right. And so, uh, it's like, why, why donate, why get involved? Why donate money to the political action committee? And then you'd ask Alexa one of those questions and she'd give you one of the issues, right? The realtors are, are advocating for on Capitol Hill. Right. And so when I sent, I created the skill, I put it out on my on, on my email list um, and I'll put it on social media and and out of the 10 years I've been doing this right as a professional speaker it was the number one open email it was the number one clicked on email it was number one forwarded on social social or number one shared on social media I was like what is this thing and in a week it had 10 reviews uh my on my lexus skill i was just like holy cow what is this and then and then right i get a cease and desist letter from the national association of realtors saying hey you can't use our logo didn't matter if i was a dues paying member didn't matter if if i was a major contributor to the pack they're like no you can't do that so you know <laughs> you know hard hard lesson learned but i but i realized how 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 um 
how people were attracted to this as a new way of being able to communicate with customers. And then I just, you know, continue to reinvest in myself and, and find new ways of being able to create other skills. So I have, you know, real real estate terms, which is 500 uh, real estate terms accessible on demand of the real estate quiz that helps people pass the real estate free license exam. Uh, and I've got a new one, right? It's super exciting. It's the voice marketing for business. Uh, uh, it has, it's multimodal. So it plays videos and stuff like this. So this is like so cool, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing is we have to kind of look at like what's, what's going to be pragmatic, right? What's What are, what are people actually going to use in the marketplace? And the challenge right now is realtors are super busy, right? In fact, because this is towards the end of the, the, the pandemic and businesses are starting to open up pendings right now are double what they were a year ago because everyone's so like getting their attention. Number one is tricky, tricky enough. But then number two, you know, when you think about, um, you know, your average realtor, they're, they're but anyway, it's between 50 and 55 years old. And so this is the average, right? Um, and, and if you want some good research, right, the, your relevance, and this is going to be in the research, you want to look at two different sources. Number one is going to be the, uh, the profile of home buyers and sellers. And it's a report that's issued annually by the National Association of Realtors. And then second is the member profile. And then this way you'll be able to see like, what are buyers looking for? What are sellers looking for? There's empirical evidence, right? So when you start to build out your Alexa skills, you can then go to the research to say, okay, all right, this starts to, this starts to uh, make a little bit more sense. And I'm just creating it because one person said, now you, now you can like start to see some of the priorities. So as we go through some of this, what I encourage you to do right now, if you haven't already, is go to the participant chat um, uh, type in a little bit of message, type in a message, just let me know, hey, I'm, I'm here. Uh, type your name, your company, uh, where you're from. Maybe if you already have a voice app that you've already created, as I can check out, um, you know, I'm happy to give you a little bit of feedback, uh, whether, whether it's like just the skill or the, or the marketing of the skill um, to be able to increase adoption. So, you know, now's your time to start to interact. And we're kind of going to go back and forth between high level concepts uh, to demonstration, but I always like to make the time to be able to answer your specific questions and make myself uh, available. So then that way you can get the most amount of value for this session. So when we think about, uh, you know, the real estate world or, or home ownership, uh, you know, so many people have one of these devices right now, but many of them, right, many of them have not moved past, you know, uh, you know, what time is it? What's the weather? What are the movies playing? Uh, play my favorite music. Uh, many of them haven't gotten past that, right? So what I believe is critically important is education, right? Like really like walking somebody through the process of how to do basic, basic tasks on this, which will then increase the likelihood that they'll try something new, right? And we know right now, like if your experience is bad or if somebody has a bad first experience, the chances of them coming back aren't gonna be very good. So what I encourage you to do is think of out of the box ways to be able to get people to start using your voice apps that you have. And what I can do is just kind of like show you something quick. It's just something easy that, that, that you can do um, right away. And then also like, if you wanna go back, I think you can walk watch the replay to see you know, how did Doug do that specifically. Um, so, I'm, so I'm happy to be able to share how. So, you know, using, so let's say you have one of these devices, right? This is the, you know, this is the, this is the Echo Dot, uh, Alexa Echo Dot. Uh, many people have one of these right now. And so what, what, what people still don't know is, is, is that you can actually program what these things say, right? And so if you wanted just to have something quick and easy, um, you know, create a custom Q and A skill. And this is, this is through what Amazon gives you for free. It's blueprints.amazon.com and you create your own. And so when you have something that's uh, right here, I'm just gonna scroll down a couple of these. Um, let's see, what's a good one here? All right, here's, here's a good one. How is the market, right? So when you say, Alexa, how is the market? Um, how, or you could say, Alexa, how is the housing market? Or you say, what is the market like? Or how is the market in Kansas City? Alexa will then say, and the Heartland MLS cl uh, closed sales increased 16.5% uh, 
5% for existing homes and 13.7% for new homes, right? And we all, um, and if you're familiar with the one breath test, you have to make sure that whatever is said back is done, all done in one breath. Like create this like as a quick demo and then be able to share this with a customer to say, hey, look, this is the possibility to be able to do this. And let's say you can't, you can't do it face, you can't do it face to face or in one of these meetings right now, just take out your phone, right? Record a little video of, of what this looks like and that's what's going to get uh, people to, to peak to peak their interest. Because I tell you what, right now, like when you think about it, realtors are busy. They don't have time to be able to figure stuff out on their own. If you can show them something that's done, that's, that's easy, that's free, then their mind's going to start to think, okay, what else is possible, right? And if you look at the steps of buying a home, you've, you, know, you, have, uh, you, know, you have the pre-approval process. Many people think of search. Well, search, if somebody is searching for homes, but they're not pre-approved for specific price range that are wasting their time, right? So when we think about search is only one like feature and many times people think of search as the primary, but no, no, like, yeah, sure. If you want to have a widget based skill, but we all know that widget based skills, people try it, they know that it works and they don't come back to it. When we develop our voice apps, we want to develop them as our friend, right? That we use like natural language in the way that somebody talks or maybe adding like a little spice, spice in the character. Like we really have to develop these, these in a meaningful way because guess what? <clears throat> Just like everybody's showing up on Zoom meeting inside the square and, and you know, we have the home office in the background or maybe have just a, like a basic green screen. Like you have to be able to set yourself apart in a way that other people haven't. And so um, this kind of like, sorry, <laughs> premature. Uh, here's where it comes down to um, like, if you were going to ask somebody, like, are you smarter than a smart speaker? If somebody said yes, then uh, kind of have to wonder, right? Because I mean, like 10 years ago, I'd say, well, gosh, I wish there was something I could go to, I could go to like Best Buy, buy one of those USB chips and then plug it into my head. Right, and then I'd not, then I'd know everything. Well, now, right now, if you have one of the Amazon Echo Buds, this is the earbuds, you can put it right in. You can walk around. You just start like talking. You have the information like accessible right now. And one of the things that I've done, um, you know, I, you know, for the last couple of years, is I'll bring somebody up on stage and I'll do the pre-license quiz. And you know, real estate brokers that have been in the business for thirty plus years cannot answer the questions that are on the pre-license test, or if they can, they're not fast enough in the eight seconds that's provided in order to be able to give the answer. So when you think about this from, okay, if I'm gonna, uh, if I'm, give me a second here. If I'm gonna ask somebody for help, right? Or I can go to a website to be able to get it fast and I don't have to contact them. What would you, what would you do? Would you rather just go to the website, be able to grab it? Or would you, you like ask somebody for help who pretty much give you the same answer? And what's was so interesting, like I've seen, I've seen these statistics change over, over, you know, the last 15 years where, you know, the pri before, Right before, before you know the internet and Zillow's and Trulia and and and, and all the you know these these web based the real estate agent was the primary source of information. Right, like you had to go to a realtor in order to find out which properties are available for sale. Right, and what's happened over time is now the internet has eclipsed this in a way that now people go to the internet first, then they contact the realtor, right? So I want you to think about this in terms of the context. If, they're, if, if, if somebody is like thinking about buying a home or thinking about selling a home and they don't have a relationship with, a, um, with an agent, they might go to a website or they might go to an Alexa skill and this develops a relationship with them. And now people have access to that, um, you know, and I'll give you some examples, right? So like if I was gonna ask you, are you a homeowner or are you a renter, right? Now I could ask somebody to fill out a form if they're, if they're a renter, as far as what their, what their information is, what, how much are they pre-approved for, what's their property search criteria, uh, what's, their, what's their debt load. And then I could be able to give them 
a, a recommendation, right? Well, if you think about what the voice assistant can do is we have this thing designed in a way that automates some of that process to a point, right? You know, people talk about, will, 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 will voice assistants replace the real estate agent? No, it just complements them in a way. What it does is it saves a real estate agent time from collecting information uh, from a customer because they don't have to ask because Alexa's already asked them for you. So it just blows me away as far as the possibilities. And we're still at the early stages, right? Like if you look right now on, on uh, and I think we're going to do this here in a second, we're going to look at the Alexa store and you type in real estate for Alexa skills. Many of them are crap. Like, I'll just be honest, many of them are crap. Even then, there's, there's also like a lot of flash briefing skills too. So it's kind of like flooded, flooded the marketplace uh, for, you know, the, the SEO terms are kind of like, oh, you're not really not getting what you want. Um, and that's just, I don't know, that's just feedback. Um, but, but regardless, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to here and kind of show you, show you what I mean here. So right here where it says uh, these different types of devices, these are the Echo Buds, right? You've probably seen these and maybe you already have. This is where it's kind of like putting a USB chip in somebody's brain. I know that sometimes even when I'm doing voice testing for, for, my, uh, for my voice apps, I'll be running, right? Like I'm, I'm a, uh, I do a lot of running now. Um, um, signed up for uh, Iron Man, I guess in December. It was it was in May, but they ended up postponing it because. But but anyways, like I'm like I'm like doing I'm I'm doing my own physical exercise with with these earbuds in my ear, and what's so cool is I can kind of just just like I'm sitting in front of a computer, but I don't have to, I can be running while I'm doing that. So I absolutely love these things as a way of just kind of planning yourself right inside in somebody's head. Also, um, I don't know if I have that, this on here, but I'm gonna pull this up. This is the next big trend that I believe we all need to be focusing on is the Fire TV. Now we say, well, do I wanna have this Fire TV stick or do I wanna have this Fire TV cube? The biggest difference that, that, that I'm aware of is that this, this device right here will turn your TV on, right? So right now you can actually start, you can start your day or you can, or like a real estate agent can start their office meeting just by asking Alexa to turn the TV on and then turn on their real estate office skill that would guide uh, an agent or the entire company through an experience that's uh, fun, that's, that's engaging. So when we look at all these different devices, the challenge now becomes, is, gosh, we have to design for each one of these. Well, you do, but then also, again, you don't because what's so important is that we have to be able to pay attention to the specific use case before we decide, are we going to make the extra investment of time and money into uh, developing a multimodal skill because you, we all, because anybody who develops a multimodal skill knows how much work goes into it, right? The, the APL that's involved like that, there, that's a, that's a significant time commitment because now you have, you now you have design that goes into this, uh, like a graphic designer, you have different sizes of these images that have to be created. So from like, like a business use case, uh, when you're working with a customer, like it can get expensive, especially if you're building to spec, which is why when we create these voice apps, we really need to be a pay, pay close attention to what that use case is before, um, you know, moving forward. Now, here's what I, I'd encourage you to do, because I kind of like, I kind of went a little bit fast uh, through some of those things. What I'd encourage you to do right now is, is just kind of uh, share with me a challenge, especially if you're working in the real estate uh, world right now, about uh, how to even develop your use case for this, uh, or even how to even, uh, if you've created a voice app, how do you be able to sell, sell, something, sell something like this in? You know, I got to tell you right now, it's very challenging as far as real estate budgets go, uh, because there was that dip in the mark dip in the marketplace um you know in the last few months um budgets are down revenue is down you know there's been several several layoffs that have been happening so people really don't have the budgets maybe that they did a year ago for something like this so you gotta have to ask yourself as far as even time or development time where do i need to be if i'm gonna position myself to work in this space um i'm happy to be able to at least share what i've kind of like gone through in my journey of working with different types of companies and, and producing these things because there's a lot right we all i mean 
<clears throat> voice app design is significantly harder than website design. There are so many moving components with this thing, especially when you understand the capabilities. It's very easy to kind of go in and create something super great. One fact, maybe uh, people are going to only use like maybe 10, 20% 10, that you have. So that can be a real, real big consideration when you're deciding how you're going to start to build some of these things out. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the smart home and uh, not only do you need to have a smart speaker, but you have to have the devices that kind of go with it. Right. And what we're starting to see is that new construction is probably the biggest uh, place. Where, like if you're going to sell in one of these voice apps is to target new home builders. Why is because they're actually integrating these smart like the the appliances and the devices inside of the units right and so <clears throat> um also when you have have something like this you have to consider your customer when they walk into the home what's that experience going to be whether it's a branded experience or it's just going to be basic that you're just kind of walking in as a normal consumer we really need to figure out what that looks like. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull this up real quick for you to be able to see. This is actually a link that I'll share inside of the chat moving forward. If you go to voice marketing for business.com forward slash smart home, you'll be able to download um, the slides that go along with this presentation with all the different smart home devices that I would recommend for a realtor, because I always like to put myself in the realtor shoes. Um, why is because they have the most amount of influence in the marketplace. And then also, um, <clears throat> you know, they're the ones who are going out and educating their customers. So I share this with you as a free resource, you know, please don't copy the whole thing and then deliver the same presentation, <laughs> you know, as your own, uh, you know, try to respect that. And, and in addition to, this uh, to the slides that are part of this. I also have a checklist that kind of lists each one of these devices step by step. And then here's what's kind of cool. This is something that I kind of did on my own. Now I use um, I created a smart home chat bot then use Twilio. I don't know if you're familiar with Twilio uh, autopilot where you can actually call this number and get smart home uh, information right over the phone or have Alexa skill called Doug on Demand that you can use, um, available by SMS and Facebook Messenger. So this is kind of like, this is, a, this is a different way of looking at this approach because what I've tried to do is take all the different questions that somebody might have, whether they're looking to um, compare you know, mesh network or the lighting or you know, which thermostat should I buy or um, how do you set up this, how do you set up a mesh network, right? And here's what's interesting too. You know, when you look at the smart home, probably the number one thing that's missing right now, it's not the smart locks, it's not the smart plugs, it's not the lights, it's the mesh network. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, well you know, this is, this is voice global. Why are you talking about the speed of the internet connection? Right. Well, with 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 a mesh network, this is going to be the device that powers all of the different all of the other ones. Right. It's going to this this the mesh network. It's not just your router. Right. But the mesh network is, is a way that you can extend your network to different areas of the home. And so uh, like if you have even like right now, right, right now, maybe you're having Zoom meetings, you're working from home, you're starting to do collaboration, but you need to go to like the far end of the house uh, because your kids are too loud or too much, too much background noise from where your like actual home office is. <clears throat> and so whether it's like the second floor, or it's the basement, you really need to get a strong internet connection to be able to, to work, you know, those meetings. But think about this, the more smart home devices that people start to add, it's going to be put a greater pressure on um, the speed of the internet connection right now. Like, I'll just do this. I'll just do this real quick. Like, if you're going to ask me, Doug, how fast is your internet connection right now? I'm at, uh, you know, 89, right? So hey, that's, 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 you know, a minimum, at least for a Zoom meeting is, is 30. But guess what? If I added on another Alexa device to the home network, or if I added in another, uh, like a smart camera, like outside, guess what? This, the speed of this connection is going to go down and we just need to be conscientious of that um, moving forward. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, specifics 
on it, um, which is why I have that resource that I shared with you, that uh, smart home guide for real estate agents is something for you to kind of like take, dissect. And then, you know, um, you know, uh, like if you have questions about it, I encourage you to ask it right now. Right. This is the this is the time to be able to do that. Now I will direct you to a link uh, towards the end where I kind of have a Facebook page and what it is. It's mostly realtors, right? It's mostly realtors who are on this. So if you wanted to get some good insights from what the real estate industry is doing, or they, or or um, <clears throat> what questions are they asking, or what are some innovative use cases in this space, um, I'll give you that link uh, towards the end. So when we look at development, right? Because I'm, I've, I've, like I've, I went to school for marketing. I don't know what you went to school for, but I went to school for marketing. I was never a developer. I was never a programmer. I didn't know how to write code. In fact, in 2017 it was the first time I opened up an IDE and uh, started to play around. I took some courses um, online as far as like how to code and stuff like that. But really, primarily, I'm I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in marketing. But what I did do, what I did take seriously though, is voice app design, right? Because we because we know it's. I mean, it doesn't matter what the code is. The design doesn't work. And it's not based upon what the user would expect or what makes it uh, beneficial for them. You know, it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna fly. So, I'm gonna point out some some tools, and maybe you're familiar with some of these tools. At least this is kind of what's helped me. And I've tried to share kind of a unique type of perspective that I thought might be. Uh, beneficial for you, especially if you're just getting started, right? Especially if you're not sure kind of which tools to, to, to turn to, or maybe what sort of process to follow. And this is just, you know, at stacking on, you know, year after year, year after year, trying, trying new things, trying to figure out, you know, what works. So, <clears throat> Um, one of the voice uh, voice design tools that I that I've been using for the last year um, is Voiceflow, right? And so here's what's interesting, and I love Voiceflow, right? I don't use I don't use it for everything. Um, actually, I don't I don't use it right now because um, I'm not developing any voice apps right now that I would that I would need this for. But like, it, this is an amazing tool, right? Um, because what it helps you do is prototype the skill and the flow in a way that map for the customer and also be able to test it, right? But there's some limitations to this, just like there are other tools. What I, what I love about this is you can quickly simulate um, the, <clears throat> you can quickly simulate the experience without having to submit it or, or to do it inside of the Alexa developer console or, <clears throat> um, and then when you think about like, okay, so this is what, this is another tool that I recommend for is for the development side is Jovo. So what Jovo allows is that like advanced customization that you can't really do inside of voice flow. And I don't know, maybe voice flow has improved. Um, I know they've been doing a really good job, but, but, but really if you want to do like advanced custom, custom enterprise voice app development, you really need, like, this is one that I would highly, highly take a look at. Also uh, this uh, right here is uh, Airtable, right? My buddy Jeff Blankerberg turned me on to this tool about a year ago, and I've been using this for so many different ways. It'll, Jeff, it'll blow, if you're watching this, it'll totally blow your mind. Um, not only am I using this to host the content of my of my voice app skill, but I'm also using this for voice testing, right? So I have somebody who's on my team here. I'll show you. I'll show you this. This is the grid view of what the responses look like, but this is my my form, right? So if you kind of go through here, um, you type in the email of the user, or it would be my uh, uh, primarily my voice app tester. I have the the intended task. This would be the the testing method because I like to use different types of testing methods, um, not just one. And then uh, the let's scroll down here for the intent. I already have these kind of listed in here to figure out okay which which intent am I going to be testing. Um, was 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 the user able to complete the task? Yes or no? Uh, how long did it take to be able to complete the task? What was the uh, was the rating like? Did it work the way you wanted to? Was it amazing? If so, it's one hundred percent. If not, if it didn't work, it'd be zero. Feedback notes, and then here, this is what's this is what I believe is, is important because sometimes you don't always get this in the way that you want inside of the testing developer console. 
um, is being able to upload the video of what that looks like, right? So like if this is something that, that, we, that we do all the time is just record a video of when you say, you know, Alexa, uh, start the session, you record a video of that. Then if, if anybody has questions, right? Just like in, with communication, there's not always, there's just because what I say, right? Doesn't necessarily mean you understand, you know, the same way with Alexa. And so it, like just having that, that video recording really points out that nuance and then you go back and say, Oh, okay. All right. This is, this is something that we can fix and would be helpful. So I can imagine based upon what I shared just right now, you probably have a ton of questions. Um, like, okay, if I'm going to develop, uh, I'm using this to develop my skill, what, what, what else should I be thinking about? Is there another tool that I can use for validation? Um, you know, I'll do my best. And what's so cool about this too also, because, um, you know, I don't have all the answers, right? I definitely do not have all the answers. Uh, I have more, I guess, ideas <laughs> than I do answers, which is why we can rely on the community, right? So if you say, well, Doug, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it that way. Cool. You know, share that in the participant chat. I'd love to be able to get your feedback. You know, one of the, one of the cool things about attending the voice, uh, uh, the voice summit last year, right? Uh, where were we? We were some, we were, we were in New Jersey right? We were in New Jersey at the, the New Jersey Institute of Technology. There are so many smart people there that have represented different capacity. And like, there is no one expert that knows everything. Like there, everyone kind of has their own piece to it, which is so cool about uh, uh, attending. And, and also you, I'm sure you're able to experience that uh, today. So <clears throat> this is what, uh, this is what kind of gets me excited, right? It's like, what's the future? Um, you know, I never, I never did, I never did like the idea of, of the label of being a futurist, um, just because it kind of sounds weird, right, to me. Um, like, like if, like, what is this going to look like five years from now? And it's so, like, nobody, nobody really knows, right? But what I think you can do is kind of set, you can kind of like identify some emerging trends, put it together, and at least have your own unique perspective. Um, you know, w the thing that I get told time after time is, uh, you know, Doug, you wrote the book Screen to Screen Selling in 2015. Eric Wan, CEO of Zoom, is on the back cover. Like, like, like you were way, you were way ahead of your time on this, right? And so, um, you know, I don't know if I'm called, I don't know if I'm a futurist or not, but I can tell you this is kind of like the direction that I'm heading, that this is heading. I'll go ahead and pull up, I'll go ahead and pull up my screen. So here, so you can see this a little bit better and we'll pull out the whiteboard. So this makes a little bit, makes it more real for you. Now I, I shared with you earlier that I believe the future of the, the superior voice app is where, um, let's say Alexa is your friend, right? Um, that you can not just rely upon it for the accurate information, but it's presented in a way that's just like talking um, to a human being. I'll also say this too, this is, this is the key. This is in my opinion. This is really the key in persistent attributes. So what I mean by that, like if I were going to, if I were going to break this off and I'm going to say, okay, are you a, are you a renter? Right. Or are you a homeowner? Now that I know, let's say if you're a renter, now I know that you're probably going to want to know, um, you probably want to know your FICO score, right? You're probably going to want to know what your, uh, your affordability is, right? You probably also want to know as far as ability. Excuse my third grade hand around. I'm going pretty fast. Um, you're probably going to want to know um, what homes are available for sale, right? Now you can give this information, you can give specific advice or counsel, but it's only if you collect the answer to the question, are you a homeowner or are you a renter, right? This is where it starts to really separate the the, the the kind of crappy skills for the ones that people go back to year, year after year. Now think about this. If you're a homeowner, you're probably going to want to know how much is my home worth, right? You're probably going to want to know like maybe some DIY tips, right? Maybe you want to look at, at an investment property because now that you have your primary residence, you might want to, or maybe you want to like a second home. 
<clears throat> now here's 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 the thing, right? <clears throat> Realtors already do this, right? They're collecting information already in their database, or at least the good ones too, right? <laughs> They're already collecting this information, but as far as the recommendations, you have to wait for somebody to get back to you in order to get the answer. If we have already mapped this out, right, with the research, with the existing transactional process, and we've done it in a meaningful way, guess what? You're not only, not only are you able to create a better customer experience, but you think about how this changes the industry on how stuff's done. We have the opportunity to lead that. I mean, how awesome is that? We have the ability to architect the synthetic intellect that enables the real estate industry to become better, faster, more accurate, consistent. I don't know. I don't know if this gets you excited, but this is what gets me excited about this. I know, I know we've kind of like talked about a lot, so many different things. You know, I encourage you to type, type in whatever questions that you have inside the participant chat. I encourage you to check some of these resources that I have. One, one, fa one last thing uh, I want to share with you is um, <clears throat> go to, let's see, two things. Sorry, two things. Um, number one is go to the Voice Marketing for Business Facebook page. Ask to join. It is a private group only because I want to make sure it's, it's a high level conversation that's kept inside of it. So uh, if you search for more voice marketing business or maybe I'll type the link in the participant chat and I can make it easier for you. And then also try this, right? This is, this is my new multimodal skill, which really is really designed for my community, which is in real estate, but anybody can use this. There's the Voice Marketing for Business podcast. There's videos on how to get started with different things inside of um and it's primarily it's primarily designed for echo show devices fire tv and fire tv stick because because this is uh, my opinion right my opinion it's going to be the tvs that talk back to you that are going to really like it's, it's kind of this sounds futuristic right but it's already happened and i'm just so glad that you're able to be able to join uh in this discussion today um you know please connect with me on linkedin you know follow me on twitter let me know what questions you can have be a valuable resource to you um thank you so much i mean uh hopefully we'll see you next year in person at the uh, voice summit take care everyone thank you <laughs>